Hey folks, uh, really sorry if some of you have already seen this video. I ran into some technical difficulties and I had to re-upload it, but it's definitely worth watching a second time. Enjoy. Hello everyone, it's Barry here. Welcome to my Virgin Kitchen. Today we are testing some more kitchen gadgets. First things first, this is a sponsored video by Best Fiends, uh, so thank you very much to them. I'll come on to it in just a minute, but it really does help uh, make getting all these gadgets possible. First up, we've got a stonking gadget, but remember, as always, some of these might help people with disabilities, and also there's an amazing playlist full of all the other gadget videos up here and down below. Right, let's get going. First gadget we're looking at, we need to make a batter for another gadget, so that works really well. Uh, this uh, is one of those as seen on TV ones. It's a 14 inch easy whisk. Uh, instructions are very simple. You just push down on the whisk and it should whisk. That's basically it. You can do omelets, cream, chocolate sauce, smoothies and more, but we're gonna make some egg waffle batter. I don't technically need to separate these eggs, but it's a good excuse to use this gadget again. There it is. I don't think there's gonna be much in the packaging. I mean, there hardly ever is, so uh, you get what you pay for, right? Oh, yes. Quite a rustic, uh, fancy, nostalgic handle on it. Good grip. Hang on a sec. Oh. Play tennis with it. So this is it. We just stick it in there and uh, <laughs> whisk it away. It's a heck of a workout. I've got to say it would work a lot better and probably quieter on a plastic bowl, but that has worked an absolute charm. I've got it all nice and foamy, lump free, exactly how I need it. So I needed to make that batter because we're about to make an egg bubble waffle pan thing. Uh, so this is the next gadget. It's come all the way from Japan or China. Um, I was expecting it to come as one pan, but it actually turned up like this in a whole kit. I've got to make it myself. So while I start to build it, uh, here's a little commercial break from today's sponsors. So today's video, folks, is sponsored by Best Fiends. And if, like me and uh, like Lizzie here, you don't know what Best Fiends is, it's basically a really, really addictive puzzle gaming uh, app where you have to uh, build up a team of fiends and defeat slugs. I know how that sounds quite a strange concept to understand, but trust me, it's a really, really cool game. So you basically have to match the same colour objects such as a leaf or a mushroom with each other to collect power-ups and pass through the levels. Now when uh, Best Fiends first got in touch I was like, alright, I'll give it a little try. So uh, I downloaded it and had what I thought was going to be like a little five minute session on it and it ended up being <laughs> a bit of a full on scale like gaming session. I should have got my headphones on and stuff. It's fair to say I'm now a little bit addicted. So what started out with me trying to get to level five, level 10, level 20, level 40. And I am now at the magical heights of level 84. It's pretty much where Mrs. Barry has been uh, on the sofa watching some sort of uh, random reality TV show, or I've been waiting for something to bake in the oven. I've been having a little cheeky play with it. And I like it. A lot. And as I say, I am now up to level 84. So uh, if you do download it, let me know what level you're up to and then we can sort of like compete against each other and then that's it, that is my life. For Easter, there's an Easter egg challenge where you can win awesome rewards and apparently if you complete all 16 levels, there is a bunny character to unlock. I've never been that excited about bunnies in my life. It's amazing. If you pass that challenge before I do, I want you to tweet me a picture evidence of that. I'm be jealous of your bunny skills. So in the description down below, there is a link so you can go and uh, download the game and at least uh, give it a go. Actually, there's some rewards and incentives now where you can get free gold and diamonds. Uh, not actual real gold or diamonds, otherwise that would be very different indeed, but they are amazing in the game. They, they really help you. I need more diamonds, actually. I seriously do love playing this game, I need to put it down. So anyhow, to be honest, during that break, I didn't build that thing at all. Let's do it now. Where do I start? There's no instructions with it at all. It's literally come like that. I feel like I'm doing DIY around the house again. Not even Lizzie helps me with that. Brush. I guess handles or drumsticks. Screws. I don't know what that is. Some sort of probe. And this must be the actual pan. Oh, wow, okay, cool. Oh, there's a, <laughs> a bit of Japanese newspaper in there. We can have a little bit of the uh, look at the stocks and shares markets if you want. <laughs> so, effectively, it's hinged here, right? 
We lift it open, cha-ching, and we should be able to make an amazing waffle like that. Um, so, how hard can this be? Okay. It's all dirty as well, look at that. Don't worry, once I get it all built, I'm gonna give it a darn good wash, and myself. Right, I think this is for lubricating our pan, uh, and this, I think it's as good as it's gonna get, so let's give everything a wash. Yep, he's still going strong as standard. This has turned into a really practical video today. I feel like this has actually come straight from the factory, like not even done any safety protocols whatsoever, just straight from like the production line into a box to my virgin kitchen. Just wanna say right now, if this gadget works, it could be the greatest thing of all time. If it doesn't, after that, I think I have the greatest gadget of all time. So apparently what we do is, sorry, I need to stop playing this game. Now I found a recipe online to help me. Um, it smells really good by the way, really custody. And what we have to do is lubricate the pan first, hence our big paintbrush that came with it. Preheat each half of the waffle pan on a medium high heat for about one minute. All right. So that's gonna get warm and I'm gonna turn it over and warm the other side. Time for the other side. <laughs> and this is where it's gonna get dangerous. All right, kids? Helps if I take the tape off the brush, doesn't it? We're gonna oil inside the, oh, that feels really nice. I'm really enjoying that. And then this side too. Pour the batter into the middle of the egg waffle pan and then immediately flip it over, making sure to hold the pan together tightly so it doesn't leak. Cook for two minutes. Teeny bit more than that. So then we close it and then tip it. That's gone all over my hob, but I'm gonna carry on. I've put my handles on wrong. I'm gonna come back to that in a minute. It's not shut and flush. I'm gonna show you the other gadgets, then we'll come back to this. So we kind of did get a bubbly effect. Um, we'll come back to that in just a minute. Now, have you ever been to a radish themed dinner party and thought to yourself, hmm, I would much prefer these radishes if they were in the shape of Super Mario mushrooms? <gasps> Could this be the greatest gadget of all time? This is the Ravenello. Um, I don't know what that word means. Sounds like a Ninja Turtle. Radish shaper, create mushroom shapes from radishes or uh, multiple radishes. Should that be called radish eye? No, uh, there we go, looks like that. That should, that, if we can make this work, this is gonna be phenomenal. Basic instructions on the back. Let's just do it. Snip, snip, snip. <laughs> there it is, look at that. It's just one piece tool thing. So the steps, which I've now managed to slice in half. Okay, first thing, cut the top off the radish. And we are actually gonna need the knife in just a jiffy. That's for the next gadget though. Press the cut edge into the serrated center. Okay, so that's that raised bit there. Flat edge into there. And we'll just press it in. Ah. Oh no, it's kind of split my radish, but we'll just skim over that. So it's in. Holding the Ravenello in one hand, turn the radish clockwise into the blade until it can go no further. Right. Let's start again. Okay, so there's actually a blade inside it, so we do need to twist it. I've got a lot of radishes. I'm supposed to pull this out and it's supposed to look like a perfect mushroom, but it just I'm just not getting that vibe at the moment. Oh, just about. Looks like a button mushroom. We'll move on with this shoddy looking thing anyway. And then basically to create the white circles, we use this little tool uh, nipply bit on the end. So we just sort of go into it. Okay, that looks pretty neat. That looks good. But the rest of it, it's pretty friggin' shocking, isn't it? Look at that. I think I'm gonna cut it more. Going for a much deeper cut. I feel like I'm at a radish festival. And if that does exist, I'd imagine they will take these along with them. All right, this one I'm more confident about. It's gone on there nice. It hasn't broken, so I've done a slightly deeper cut. Oh, because it is actually, can you see the bit, the actual radish is coming out that side. Uh -huh. I was wondering where it was going. I was like, is it magic? It's like a radish pencil sharpener. One of the first gadget videos I ever did was the carrot sharpener with Phoebe. Uh, but this is actually, can you see that? It's coming out of there. Great. Yeah, because I can see the stems come out right that side there as well. So let's, um, 
<laughs> yes. Can you see that? That's much better. Look at that. Yep. That's a mushroom. Now I've just got to scoop it out with this and just pray that it doesn't break. Do you remember the good old days when it used to be things like the Oreo hook that I also flew on a drone? Those were easy gadgets. What's going on? <laughs> Keep dropping my radish. So I just gave it a bit of a top and tail. So I uh, tried to straighten the edge a little bit and there we go, we have a Super Mario Radish. Just trying to get one more done. Oh yes, that is much better. That's good. And you get a little radish lace as well. I love it. I don't know why, but I love it. Here's a question for you. If Michael Jackson didn't take up singing, but was actually a knife expert, he would use these. Uh, these are no cry gloves. Uh, basically they are gloves that apparently you can use sharp objects. Uh, I did speak to my builders and they did recommend not using an angle grinder uh, but more things like sharp knives for when you're slicing which would have been perfect for my radish moment right there and these can prevent you from being cut. So we will start with a very simple knife. It's not made of steel or anything like that I don't think unless it's really finely woven and sort of metally stuff like that but um, it feels very comfortable kind of like totes toasties for my hands. Uh, so this is a, a like a butter table knife and uh, wouldn't really hurt anyway if I did this. Ooh, actually feels quite nice. I'm like buttering my own hand. But there we go. This is a slightly smaller paring knife that I just used on the uh, radish at the moment. It looks quite big from there, but it is, it's quite a small knife. Uh, here we go. I'm just gonna go on the top. Ooh, I'm alive. I'm still alive, look. Okay, that's really, really cool. I can go like that and it's not it's not, don't play with knives people, but obviously this is what this gadget's intended for. That is legitimately working. That's really cool. Bigger knife. So this is my uh, big boy knife that I've just sharpened as well that I use for most chopping my veg and stuff. So uh, here we go. Didn't you see that? Wow, that is amazing. I've got loads more knives I could use, but I wanna try it finally with a bread knife. See how it's got like that serrated edge? Uh, so you use that quite a bit. So when you're slicing fresh loaves of bread, this could be quite useful. Oh, wow. There is that initial fear where you're like, I'm using a knife on my hand, is this dangerous? But no, these gloves, they're called no cry gloves, and that works a charm. And then you are optional backup. <laughs> Michael Jackson. Just in case you're wondering, look, my hands, not a single mark on them. Jazz hands. Next gadget I am dead excited about because I get to have ice cream at half past nine in the morning. This is the Quizzy Pro. It sounds like a rapper, doesn't it? It's like Quizzy Pro in it, in the house, my new album, uh, Ice Cream Scoop and Stack. This is what it is, an ice cream scoop and stack. Quizzy Pro in belle le creme glacé. Basically a shaft of uh, scooping ice cream out into like a really neat cylinder shape. Uh, does it, you sort of compress it and lift it out. It's gonna be great. Uh, the serving suggestion was in one of these sort of like cone bowls, but my supermarket that I went to didn't have that, but do have oysters, which is like the second best wafer ever after those ones that are huge with chocolate all over it. And even better, we're using Cornish ice cream. Now Cornwall is quite near where I live and it's like, we all speak like that round that. We got always Cornish ice cream. It's amazing. Oh, wow. That looks a lot more expensive than I thought and also a little bit like a pepper grinder. Do you want pepper on your ice cream? Or do you? <laughs> so we push into you like that. You're the ice cream right now. And imagine there's ice cream in there, but I'll just reenact it like that. So the ice cream's there. I push my button and then I pull you out. Oh, and if you've never seen them before, these are ice cream wafer oysters. They are friggin' amazing. They've got marshmallow in the middle, oyster shaped chocolate and coconut. <laughs> but it's not about them. It's about this. Incidentally, I just found this in the drawer from a previous gadget video, the uh, heat one. On the review I did of it, it wasn't that great, but we now use it regularly. You have to really warm it up. So here we go. We push the scoop into the ice cream like so. <laughs> uh, uh, <gasps> <laughs> Holy ice cream. Get it? So, sorry. Oh. <laughs> 
Look at that. Come on. Off you come. That's amazing. Oh. <laughs> My mind telling me. Oh, wrong playlist. Sorry. All right then folks, so uh, despite the pile of random measles of pancake leftovers left behind me, I've changed the handle round and it now does indeed shut flush. Why didn't you guys tell me, right? You were watching it, you could have helped me out. Uh, if you think that's bad though, that DIY, you should see the state of my wallpaper in. Well actually, it ain't too bad on the camera. Right, let's do this pancake. Let's do it folks. I'm gonna use my pastry brush this time. We're doing it on my terms. Uh. Randomly, while I was putting that together, the postman uh, arrived and uh, I've got another gadget just arrived called a, a fry wall. So that'll go into the box with the other hundred that are waiting. It's nice and hot and oiled up. Batter up. I don't know if I did that very well. So those instructions were to literally flip it as quick as you can. So, <laughs> to be honest, I'm just gonna cook the hell out of this. Please work, please work. If it doesn't, we've got enough batter for one more attempt. And this is a lot hotter than it looks and it's nearly burning my face. <gasps> I just saw a ball drop. Don't take that the wrong way. <gasps> yes. That side, not so much. I've turned it off the heat. No one will notice. You know what, I can't be bothered to do it again, but that does work. I'm so excited to see what this tastes like. It's got custard in it and condensed milk. Everyone loves that. Oh my gosh, drunk him. So there we are then folks, another kitchen gadget testing video done and in the bag. If you've missed any of the others now, please check out the playlist. There's a link up here and down below. It's hours of gadget testing videos. Uh, you guys seem to love grabbing the popcorn and watching that. And thanks again so much to Best Fiends for sponsoring this video. It does just make my whole channel uh, and even affording gadgets and things possible. So do please check out the app, download it, it is addictive. Uh, but ultimately, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for regular recipes and food fun. And I'll see you next time.